Uh, and, you know, all of you probably are looking to say, uh, in the face of some politicians talking about regulation and, you know, this morning, even some advocates for AI regulation, how can we put these, uh, a these AI ethics uh, actually in, in, the, in, in policy, in, in law? Uh, and I, I might offer this for discussion to, the, to, to people in the audience and to the panel. Uh, you know, one is uh, data provenance. You know, actually proving where our data comes from is one of the big issues for uh, the, the, the new LLMs and the new expressions of LLMs is the degree to which we can be manipulated even more than we had in the past. Uh, and so digital uh, uh, signatures, you know, kind of digital watermarks are a, are a way to do that. So data provenance. Uh, a second way is uh, data lineage. So how has my data been manipulated up from the source? How has it been transformed uh, at every stage? And that's something we can write into laws. So data provenance uh, and data lineage are something that we can do uh, right now. Uh, a third way that is maybe also worth a discussion is the degree to which we audit some of these algorithms, uh, either from uh, experts like uh, Dr. Mitchell or myself or, or, or Edwin uh, or, or others, where we can, as third-party outside observers, look at algorithms that are deployed by, by large organizations or governments and say, does that algorithm do what you said it would? <clears throat> you know, does, it, does it represent an, an unbiased view or, does, you know, or, or some sort of neutral uh, uh, output that you, that you uh, uh, had intended? You know, we all do this uh, with regard to credit scores. You know, it's called zero trust frameworks where you, know, you put an input at the top and you get out some output enough times that you can kind of trust what's in the middle without revealing any, anybody's intellectual property. And that's a, that's a third way, in addition to providence and lineage, uh, that we can today uh, just implement some of these uh, ethics procedures. So th that's what I might offer uh, for this discussion. The, we could talk about it in the future, but you know, maybe how, how do we ground the ethics today uh, in the present? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Margaret, are you there? Yeah, so that, I'm here. Yeah, I hope you guys can see me. I don't think I'm on the screen. Um, but uh, yeah, these were really, really great points. And so I have a few sort of thoughts on this. One is that um, it's interesting, Eric, that you're making this distinction between data provenance and data lineage. Um, I see lineage as a subset of provenance. And so I'm actually a little bit unsure about, I think, the point you're making about digital markers in particular. Um, that doesn't sound like provenance to me, but it does sound like something else that I think is really important, which is verifying the data that a model was trained on. So if you have a model trained on data X, you're able to actually verify that it was trained on that data. It kind of seemed like maybe you were getting at that, but I wasn't sure. I'd, I'd love to know more about that. Um, the point about auditing and uh, as, as well as having data documentation. That's uh, one of the reasons why I sort of split things up into these four modules, this pipeline, because you can think of each of those modules as creating paper, creating a paper trail. So you have a paper trail for the data. You have a paper trail for the model training. You have a paper trail for the the evaluation, and then you have a paper trail for how people are using it. So those four pillars, I think, lend themselves really nicely to auditing frameworks. Um, and I think, you know, maybe as you referred to in particular, I've done some, some work on specifically what would need to be documented for the data and for the models. And I think that there's um, already a lot of ideas um, from that work going into the regulation now, but definitely provenance uh, in terms of lineage is, is a critical one. Um, and then I would also add to that uh, rigorous evaluation minimally, but there's a lot more to be said there. But I think uh, in addition to that, um, current AI is actually learning from data and they also mm -hmm. generate the data. And uh, one AI generated the data set and another AI can learn from the uh, data set that was generated by another AI. So in some sense, it's not quite clear like earlier technology that the, the, the source, the real source of the data and copyright or something like that. What do you think about uh, that kind of yeah, complexity of the data. It's, it's not so very clear like earlier technology. What do you think? Uh, it's, it, it's really helpful in some of these issues to distinguish what is a human problem, a societal problem, and what is a technical problem. Uh -huh. 
right? If, if, if we are confused about where uh, data was sourced from, then we're confused about where the data is sourced from. You know, we first just need to establish that, and humans need to ultimately establish that. And, it, and it's not just in creative works. It could be, uh, uh, and, and not just in media or in, or in journalism. Uh, it can be any range of, uh, of places. Uh, Talking medicine, you know, I'm not a, a subject matter expert in any, anything, you know, other than AI. Uh, you know, I don't know medicine. I don't know transportation. I don't know... Uh, avionics, you know, subject matter experts need to authenticate data in these different domains. They will be the ultimate arbiters of the facts in each of these domains. So in uh, some other area where we need to authenticate the facts of, a, of creative works or authenticate facts of, uh, of a journalist exploration, you know, somebody needs to verify, some subject matter expert that's not me uh, needs to verify, or you know, any other basement dwelling AI, AI person like me, uh, uh, needs to verify the uh, authenticity of the facts, then what we then can talk about is uh, the degree to which the technology is able to track that and track the, the, the pathway uh, of that data through, uh, uh, through different pipes. You know, so what, one of the things I know I, I get involved in in these very large enterprises that often get overlooked is that these organizations run on databases. Everybody knows that. And these databases go through these massive uh, 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 evalu evaluations. They, they, they transfer, people talk about migrations to the cloud, right? This is, these are massive undertakings uh, that happened over many, many, many years. Uh, how do we authenticate that the data never got manipulated during that process, during this extract process, during the egress uh, process? That's, that's a, but that's a technical issue, right? So those are, those are different issues to address other than the very good point you're bringing up is how do we actually establish uh, facts on the ground. Okay. So Margaret, do you have any opinions? Uh, yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, <laughs> I have many opinions about regulations and I think I, I made this point uh, last time I went to about sort of the paper trail and what needs to be handled. Um, I'm uh, there's, there's like a few points going on, so I'm trying to connect them. I'll just... Um, I'll I'll say that I'm I I'm not sure that I buy the argument that you have to combine probabilistic with deterministic models unless you're saying by deterministic models you mean like rules like not even a model like a rule then I understand what you're saying and I and I can agree with that but on on the model side I'm I'm a little the bit deterministic mm -hmm. AI is good old fashioned AI it's good old fashioned symbolic deterministic whatever whatever you want to call it rule rule based yeah, rule based rule, rule based AI if you want to you can call it that if you'd like all right. Because, you know, because you can have a deterministic model that's still very wrong. So <laughs> just, to, just to be rules. clear. You can have rules that are very wrong. Uh, we're just discussing yeah. different types of AI. So, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's so true. Scale, but um, scale the symbolic AI with abstract math, and then you combine that with a probabilistic AI. And that's how you, and you put a human in the middle, and that's how you get a reliable system. You can't, you, hmm. the, the research says you cannot have a reliable system that you're going to bet your life on uh, without those three components. It's definitely the case that you can't have a reliable system um, unless you have a human. And even with a human in place, it's not necessarily going to be reliable. Uh, I would be hesitant to rely. For those three things. <laughs> those three things. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, am, I understand what you're saying at a high level. I think maybe to get into like the specifics of the determinism, we maybe have to have a longer chat. But um, I, I do really agree with the point that you need to have some some balances um, in order to deal with like the different kinds of errors that different kinds of models will make and that and that people will make for that matter. Um, so but uh, sort of I guess hopping back to the point specifically around regulation, I don't know that it makes sense for governments to mandate what would be rules or what a deterministic model should do. Um, I'm a little bit worried that um, you run into the problem of uh, regulators not fully understanding the technology and then kind of shooting themselves in the foot, uh, you know, requiring something that um, is actually going to bring about what they're trying to avoid. Um, I could give some examples of that, but but instead I'll just sort of quickly say um, I think that uh, sort of the sweet spot for regulation is where you have um, top down and bottom up. So you have the self-regulation bottom up from tech companies 
and uh, top down from regulators where the regulators define what you need to demonstrate. You need to demonstrate fairness. You need to demonstrate privacy. You need to demonstrate, you know, these different kinds of values that are key and also um, come into play for regulation. And then it's up to the tech company bottom up to do the self-regulation for how to meet those goals. Um, and so a lot of tech companies will make the self-regulation argument very strongly. Um, and I think I agree with some of that where it comes to regulators trying to dictate the behavior of the company or the behavior in terms of the internals of what the system is doing, as opposed to setting the final constraints of what you need to show and demonstrate. So I kind of think that that's, and also trying to sort of tie it to your points too, I, th I think that's sort of the best path for regulation where the regulators say, here's what you need to show. And then internally, the inner workings are, are defined by the company doing it. Thank you very much uh, uh, for th the three uh, distinguished speakers for attending this uh, panel. I guess we have learned a lot about the technological as well as the human issues regarding the AI, transparency and the biases. So people are working on still. And also uh, there are some uh, balance between the innovation and the, the responsibility of uh, new the generative AI technologies. So um, with that, I thank all the three speakers today, Eric Daimler, Dr. Eric Daimler, and uh, Margaret Mitchell, and uh, Edwin Penn. Thank you very much for attending this panel.